Well, welcome back uh, after lunch. I'm uh, impressed that so many of you came back this, uh, <laughs> in this sunshine. It's nice weather outside. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the, the summertime. I don't know if you know when the sun rises and the sun sets here now in Stockholm. <laughs> Any idea? I think it's around 4 a.m. in the morning, sunrises and uh, almost 10 in the evening. So uh, long hours. Um, there are even longer hours in Luleå. That's a town 1,000 kilometers north from here. I have some relatives there. They're having an uh, ice cream uh, delivery business. And uh, they recruit people saying that, OK, we work from sunrise to sunset in the summer, so <laughs> they have a lot to do. <laughs> All right, so the topic for this talk is um, Thea for non-programmers. And um, uh, it's about a uh, custom young, um, uh, custom Thea application for young modelers. I'm going to explain a little bit more what young is. Uh, you can see that I uh, uh, edited the Thea uh, logo a little bit, including Young there, to show that it's uh, for, for young modelers in this case. All right, so let's get started. Uh, yeah, I should present myself. My name is uh, Andreas Jakobik. I work here at Ericsson and uh, in a tools development department. We're only three guys now, me, Rim, sitting here. And you and I guess is still there. Great. So uh, three of us. And uh, we're focusing on um, specifically on um, tools supporting uh, operation and maintenance development. And uh, so that means uh, tools for uh, modeling op O&M interfaces, basically. Yeah. So our mission for this part is that uh, as a young modeler, uh, I want to have an easily started or bootstrapped ID, including a state-of-the-art editor that can validate young models according to both standard and Ericsson specific young design rules. And automatically support to automatically support uh, um, well to support the review and publishing workflow, so that the models that have been validated then can be deployed without any problems on the network elements. That's basically it. So what is Young? You may ask. Have you heard about Young in this context? Anyone? Yes, I'm new type folk, so yes. Well, uh, it's an IETF uh, standard, 7950. Um, and uh, it's, for, uh, it's a data modeling language. You can uh, define the configuration of a, anything and the state information, but also commands in, in terms of actions and RPCs. So it's a pretty feature-rich uh, language as such, and uh, it really requires a, a nice editor, I would say, to make the best of it and uh, to, to, to handle the models as, as uh, good as possible. It's a text-based uh, modeling language also, and it's used a lot in the networking industry to models like uh, routers and uh, radio base station interfaces and, and a lot. It's, it's used a lot now, and uh, many standardization organizations have uh, turned to Young for, for modeling uh, much more than, than we model at Ericsson. So it, it has gained momentum, this language. And uh, yeah, just a quick um, tour of the Ericsson O&M evolution prior to 2010. We had a pretty, maybe I would <laughs> can say now, chaotic uh, uh, situation. It was not chaotic in the sense that uh, 
um, different applications. They all have their own ONM, and that was, that, was, that was pretty orderly done and all that. But there were many different ONM islands, I would say, different tools, different modeling languages, and, uh, and so forth. So that cost a lot of money, of course, to maintain and all that. So um, it was decided to try to align and uh, conform. And uh, what was done during a number of years was to uh, standardize on, on UML uh, to define these models. Uh, and UML with uh, certain profiles, uh, of course, to, because, um, to restrict and add on new properties that were needed. But basically UML. Um, but since then, uh, when Young was gaining momentum and there was um, customer demands to support Young, we're now basically in a, a transition phase to, to Young, to use IETF Young. But the UML models will still be there for, for a long time, so this is not done overnight, but, but this is the, the direction. And uh, we've been, uh, we, all, we actually had even in, uh, in the UML world, then we were using Eclipse, obviously, and uh, EMF and UML2 APIs and all that. But even in that environment, we had an uh, Xtext grammar for, that we uh, defined in-house for Young. So we had Young, kind of a Young support also in Eclipse. But since Yang is open source, uh, it made sense to have an open source tool. Um, there were no really good ones out there. So uh, with the help of Typefox, we now have a, a great, as I see it, support for, for the Yang modeling language. And it's all in open source. So please go ahead and, and try it out and, and, and see what you like. And so both it was a uh, shift from UML to, to Young, but also technology shift now, of course, from Eclipse to, um, to Thea. So that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about today. Um, since we're, we're very fond of this uh, new technology, the new way of working, um, but um, what does the user think, really? So uh, we've actually um, uh, had a survey for the users of, um, of this new environment to get their feedback. So that's what I'm going to present here today. And the new user interface looks like this. This is an in-house developed workspace server. It's now called Juggler used to be called Gaia, pair it with Thea, <laughs> but uh, that name was uh, eventually taken in, in house, so now it's Juggler. It's a, a portal, a um, very simple one, but uh, still uh, it works uh, uh, nicely. What you do in this uh, web uh, interface is to define projects and you can include repositories that you'd like to have included. And then you create a container based on a specific a Docker container um, uh, based on a specific image uh, that we have prepared. Uh, so that's basically the, the way. This is one half of the user experience, I would say, that I'm going to present here today. Um, the other half is, of course, um, the Thea environment. So maybe I can show you. Live is uh, funnier that way. Uh, so here we have the Juggler portal. So here I already created a container. And uh, as you can see, <laughs> we have some capacity issues. Or, uh, so each user is now restricted to two containers. I've already done those, I have those created. Uh, so that's something to work on, obviously. But here we have a drop down list and uh, to op open up. The Thea, you click there, and then in the other tab, you get this environment for the young modelers. All right, so 
For example, you get this uh, repository cloned automatically since it was included in the project. And, but you can, of course, use the terminal window to clone whatever projects you like. Um, there is an internal Gerrit uh, um, uh, repository that, that uh, um, uh, the SSH key from the, this portal, ha uh, you have to upload it to this Garrett. But then after that, it's fine to just clone any repositories you like. So here we have a number of young files. Let's open one. So, uh, well, it has basically everything you'd like from an advanced editor and outline view, of course. One particular feature we're very proud of, thanks to Typefox, is the uh, Young Diagram editor. So it's not only textual, you have a graphical uh, user interface as well. It's a graphical overview of the actual model. And uh, of course, when you click here, it's, you go to the right position, even the other way around. But you cannot add it directly, the model, in the diagram view. Um, but you can expand. Here you see the dependencies. You can double click on it and you get the file there, or you can expand its context like that. So uh, this is uh, really useful, we find, we feel, for, for getting an overview of the models uh, as such. All right. I don't want to show anything more because that's not the focus of this talk. So now I'd like to continue with the actual feedback from the users. Right, so uh, if you don't ask, then we may believe that this is great and good for everyone. So uh, we did the survey uh, to our 60 plus young stakeholders in house, uh, about a third of them answered. So this, <laughs> I'm sure it's not statistically secure, but I mean, it's what we got. And I'm gonna present you what the summary of what, what the feedback was. Uh, right, so we have a number of uh, questions. Uh, I'm gonna go through them. And then in the end, maybe that's more interesting, the, the actual, um, they could also submit textual or uh, uh, free text uh, feedback. So I'm gonna throw, go through some of the comments that we have received also. So for what purpose do you use this young cloud ID as we call it? Well, it's both editing and viewing. Um, Young itself is a great specification language in that it's made for humans to read, not, but also uh, it, it drives CLI and NetConf interfaces on the network elements. So it, but the primary focus is to have something that's easy to read for humans. Uh, this is uh, maybe interesting then, uh, how do you rate your overall experience with the Young Cloud ID? And it's uh, pretty favorable, I would say. Um, who knows out of the 40 or so that did not answer the survey what they think, maybe they didn't find it worthwhile or they, they, they think they maybe did not have uh, any strong opinions. So here we have like strong opinions maybe coming through. But um, mostly uh, positive. Uh, yeah, I should say five is, is excellent and one is very poor there. Uh, so, uh, when not using this environment, what do you do? Uh, um, so, a lot of people still use uh, plain text editors, obviously. Uh, Eclipse some, VS Code some, and uh, I guess, uh, yes, there was one who answered uh, this with a, with a young extension in, in VS Code. And that's exactly the same um, support that we have included. It's the same. Uh, young LSP and uh, open source project that Typefox has developed. But you don't get the diagram part in that case. All right. 
Um, so how do you rate young cloud ID compared to other environments? Yeah, pretty favorably. Five is the best. Um, so, and what do you value the most? Uh, since we put the first options there first, maybe that's why they got the most clicks or, <laughs> but uh, anyway, easy, it should, must be easy and that, that what users value. Easy to install, to get started, that's really important. Everything else is secondary, it seems. And uh, yeah, I don't know what this gives, but uh, how well does it correspond to what you have selected in the previous question? And yeah, it seems to be a pretty good um, connection there. Then we have some uh, options just to get the feel for how much of the features that we think everyone is using have, been, uh, have actually been used. For example, the outline view, maybe not everyone has really <laughs> discovered it. Um, Git support, not everyone. Third hasn't done it. Terminal window, about the same. Has not. Um, yeah. Then we have built some features on top of uh, the open source young tooling and, uh, and uh, we package that in an executable jar file which can be executed in the terminal window. But we also provide that in uh, the actual GUI. So yeah, I should mention that, that um, we've, we've been using the, the young, uh, uh, or the Thea extension mechanism to do that. Let me see. Right, so for example, right click here, we have something called Young Utilities. And here we can generate a JSON schema from the Young model or pre-process them for various targets or validate, for example. And uh, these are features on top of uh, what's provided uh, open source, so to speak. And then in the problems, now I did the validation and I uh, got the results here but they're also fed back into the, the editor. Right. Uh, okay. So have you opened the young file as a diagram, the feature I showed you that we're really fond of? Not everyone has found it yet, unfortunately. All right. So now I'd like to go through some of the textual or free, free text uh, comments, uh, which gives a little bit more nu nuance to, to um, what, the, uh, what people actually think. And uh, yeah, if we start with the good, to stay on the positive side, uh, with people saying that this is a great environment, easy to get going, switching between locations, Overall works well. Fun because it's very responsive. Great, found all the functions I needed. And uh, yeah, so uh, here is a bunch of people. This, and they, these were all non-programmers really. We had the question in this survey, if you consider yourself or code on a regular basis or if you're more into the management side of things like project technical or um, people side and um, yeah. So this good uh, feedbacks came from mostly the, um, the non-programmers actually. So they've been very benevolent and I mean uh, kind to this new environment I would say. All right, let's have a look at the bad side. And this is also from non-programmers. And this is a valid point, I think. Uh, when doing an initial setup, you could think of the user's use case instead of requiring the user to know all, all the detailed info. I think what's men meant here is that in the juggler portal, you're required to know exact, the exact name of the, of the uh, Docker image to 
clone or to create your container on. Um, so that's a bit technical. We could simplify that. The other things maybe. Um, yeah, this is definitely an issue that we've had. Uh, partly because this has taken off and um, this portal was not really designed from day one to scale with a load. So there have been a number of outages, outages and uh, that has of course uh, um, colored the feedback. But it's also something not directly related to Thea, but still, since Thea is a cloud-based environment, that's something to take seriously, that you have high availability of these things. Yeah, sometimes validation is stuck. That may be also an availability thing. Export of files doesn't always work. I must restart my browser to get it to work. I'm not sure if that rings any bell to you. Um, and user guide documentation, yeah. Um, we'd like to have uh, an environment that is really intuitive and easy to use, that doesn't uh, require so much documentation at all, but still um, we could uh, improve. Uh, Git integration has also been an issue, but that may be due to Git versions uh, that's provided. Uh, but then uh, we have some other bad feedback uh, from uh, programmers. How about this one? I never saw an ID worse than this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's better to have an offline ID, for example, Eclipse, all right? Um, so I think uh, the programmers in this case, they've been asked to do the young modeling, uh, but they also have already have an environment set up locally. So they, they're harder to, uh, to get, I mean, to, to, to start using this. They already have an environment locally and they're fine with that. And they, they, this is just a nuisance to them that they have to switch. Um, because we have a num number of, of uh, such comments. Looks useful, but I have many other tools in my development uh, on Linux, blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, he wants it to have it in the same place. And, um, and of course, this young modeling environment is not designed to be uh, a general uh, development environment. It's specifically tailored to, to do young modeling. So, and uh, yeah, it works fine, but you know, we have uh, use VS Code locally instead. Uh, yeah, this is the same comment. So the, from the programmers, uh, not so impressed uh, is my take on this side. But then this was not a, a programmer's environment as such, but it's specifically for young modeling use case. Uh, then we got some comments that were a bit strange. Uh, there's one uh, positive guy. I managed to set up the environment without problems, but not managed to get the editor working. <laughs> so I wonder what was working then, um, but still positive. Um, yeah, seems to be dependent on Git. Well, not so much. And then, uh, yeah. So this was a new user, obviously, but uh, that's also our duty to try to um, give some introductions and, and uh, you know, follow up on this thing. So it's up to us to, to see that people are really understand the environment and how, how it works. Copy and paste, that's now supported, right? Control C, Control V. So I don't know why it didn't work here. Uh, okay, then we have a few suggestions. Uh, I don't know if there's anything uh, for you guys in this community to follow up on, but uh, well, we'll see. A spell checker for descriptions would be nice. Uh, is there any such thing? that you can plug in, maybe later when we have uh, VS Code <laughs> extensions. <laughs> um, uh, expand the tabs to full window view. Well, that would be difficult, I guess, especially the diagrams. 
Yeah. It's possible now. Oh, cool. I didn't know. Uh, more documentation would be helpful. All right. Um, but this is for the user side, but also for uh, the uh, developers side, I guess more documentation would be helpful. Uh, advanced folding, as in JA, it would be useful. That's, I don't know if that's supported. Um, I think what it means is that you can expand all the levels at once or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this is a young uh, specific thing, I think. There we have some rules as to the indentation of the description fields in these young models. So that would be more of a requirement on the um, formatting, I guess, and uh, to have it more uh, configurable. Um, but it's a valid comment, but it's not in general for Thea. Miss warning for trailing white spaces. Yeah, if you have any comments, uh, just uh, let me know. Uh, or we can take questions uh, afterwards. I also miss validation when I write the model, so I don't have to run validation separately. Right, so there is both built-in validation from the open source, young LSP, obviously, but we have added uh, validation also, and, and um, that's actually a microservice that we have up and running here at Ericsson that we connect to, and, and but we can't have that one run continuously, so the user has to explicitly call validation. So maybe that's what's uh, bothering this guy. Uh, I really don't see how we can solve that right now, but uh, it's a valid point. Um, right, to jump from one error to the other in the code editor. So there are lots of things related to the editor, which of course, I don't know how much we can influence that. As it's hmm. Right. All right, so that's about it. Um, I would say, I mean, non-coders really appreciate this TIA-based young modeling environment. We got positive feedback, more so than programmers. And um, my main obstacles has been the availability of this workspace server. So that's something for us to work on, and it's not related to Thea per se. So, <laughs> I like, I like. Keep up the good work. Any <coughs> questions? Yeah? Can, uh, can we allow our modeling in the Rust editor? No. Uh, the question is, do you uh, enable modeling itself in the graphical editor? No, we cannot uh, model uh, directly in the graphical editor. You can click on it and, and get to the right place in the text, but not editing. N not planned even, or? Well, we should ask John Kernline. I think uh, that's a topic uh, very difficult uh, to, to achieve. There's a prototype of one we have added. Uh -huh. So may, maybe, but we, we currently have no plans to include it, but it would be an interesting feature. Hmm? Actually, perhaps more comment on the control C, control V. Uh, I have a Swiss keyboard, and for example, things like control shift one, which is control plus for me, don't work in, in, in some browsers. Um, so that's like an old pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I still have it. Well, I think it doesn't support the workspace with all the stuff that you just said in the name. But you can install a combination, for example, in it. No, it's not that it works at the main browser in some way, but it's more, I think it's the other way around. Like, you cannot programmatically access the port. You can yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the other way around than the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, last time I checked it, it worked in Chrome, yeah with the uh, shortcuts. Hmm. How did the uh, non-coder uh, react to working with Git and running uh, Git commands from the command line? <laughs> Good question. Um, 
yeah, that, that is a struggle. If, if, uh, if the non-coder has no experience whatsoever with Git before, then that's a challenge. Uh, it helps with the graphical Git support in TIA that we've included. Um, that covers almost everything they, they need to do. But um, for sure, first time around, uh, it's good to show, show the users exactly what to do. Yeah. And, the, and of course, it's more challenging to use the terminal, um, obviously, for new users. Yeah. All right, that's it. Thank you very much.